Fear is a spot by Eric Hill. Naughty spot. It is dinner time. Where can he be? Is he behind the door? No. Is he inside the clock? No. Is he in the piano? No. Is he under the stairs? No. Is he in the wardrobe? No. Is he under the bed? No. Is he in the box? No. There is a spot. He is under the rug. Try the basket. Good boy spot. Eat up your dinner. The end. Feed the cat. Checks out the library. Pete's mom is taking him to the library for the first time. The librarian gives Pete his very own library card. Cool, says Pete. The librarian smiles. Time for the tour. The librarian takes Pete through the library. There is a big that's where people wait to check out books. Pete sees some of his friends reading at the long table. It was very peaceful and quiet. How relaxing. The librarian takes Pete to her favorite room. There are lots of Pete-sized chairs and tables and shelves. There are books of every shape size and color what do i do now pete asks now you read a book the librarian says which book should i read as pete you can read any book you like says the librarian pete looks around there are so many books pete picks up a book all about airplanes and jazz. He reads it and pretends he is stunt pilot. He flies a super fast jet and does loop the loops and spirals high in the sky. Then Pete finds a book with dragons, wizards and unicorns on the cover. He reads it and imagines that he is a powerful wizard using magic spells and a special wand to defend his castle against a fire-breathing dragon. Next, Pete opens up a book about spiders and insects. He reads it and imagines that he is a scientist studying all types of critters in the wild. He has to be very still to study some critters and very fast to study others. Then Pete chooses a book with all sorts of scary monsters on the cover. It is a book of fairy tales. Pete reads it and pretends that he is in a dark, spooky forest trying to outsmart a big bad wolf. Pete puts that book back on the shelf. It is too scary. Pete opens up a book about the pyramids in Egypt. He reads it and pretends that he is an explorer riding a camel across the desert and climbing to the top of a giant pyramid. Next, Pete Picks a book with all sorts of robots on the cover. He reads it and imagines that he is a robot at a robot dance party. His arms and legs make whizzing sounds when he moves. When Robot Pete speaks, he says, Blip, bloop, blip. Next, Pete 
picks up a book about superheroes, he reads it and makes believe that he is a superhero. He flies around the city in a colorful cape, chasing bad guys and saving the day. Then Pete spots a big book about the ocean and all the creatures. He reads it and imagines that he is a scientist in a submarine deep in the Atlantic Ocean looking for whales, squids and sharks. There are so many wonderful books to read at the library. Pete can be whatever he imagines with a book. The end. Pancakes, pancakes for Eric Carl. Kikri kri, crowed the rooster. Jack woke up, looked out the window and thought, I would like to have a big pancake for breakfast. Jack's mother was already up and busy. Mother, Jack said, I would like to have a big pancake for breakfast. I am busy and you will have to help me, she said. How can I help? asked Jack. We will need some flour, she replied. Take a sickle and cut as much weed as the donkey can carry. Then take it to the mill. The miller will grind it into flour. When Jack had cut enough wheat, he put it on the donkey's back and took it to the miller. Can you grind this wheat for me? He asked. I need it for a big pancake. First, we must separate the grain from the chaff, said the miller. He gave Jack a flail and spread the wheel onto the ground. The miller took another flail and began to beat the wheat with it. Jack helped with the threshing and soon there was a big pile of straw and chaff and a small pile of grain. The miller poured the grain on a large flat stone on top of it with a round millstone connected to the water wheel on the outside. The water wheel turned round and round, turning the millstone round and round too to grind the grain into flour. At last, the miller handed Jack a bag of Flower. Here is the flower, shouted Jack. Let's make a pancake. But his mother said, now we need an egg. Jack went to the black hen and fed her some grain that had slipped into his pocket while he had been threshing. Cluck, cluck, said the black hen and went inside the hen house. Then she said, cluck, cluck once more and laid an egg here is an egg shouted jack let's make a pancake but his mother said now we need some milk jack went to the spotted cow and began to milk her moo moo said the spotted cow as the milk squirted into the pail here is the milk, shouted Jack. Let's make a pancake. But his mother said, we need some butter. Jack got out the butter churn and held it between his knees and put it into the butter churn. Jack pushed the churn handle up and down, up and down. Finally, the cream turned into butter. Here is the butter, shouted Jack. Let's make a pancake, but his mother said, we need to build a fire. Jack went to woodshade and brought some firewood. Here is the firewood, shouted Jack. Let's make a pancake, but his mother said, wouldn't you like to have something sweet on your pancake? So Jack went down to the coal cellar and pulled a jar of strawberry jam from one of the shelves. Here is the strawberry jam, shouted Jack. Let's make a pancake. In the kitchen, Jack's mother had filled the table with the flour, the egg, the milk, the butter. There was also a mixing bowl, a cup, 
a wooden spoon, a ladle, a frying pan, a plate, a knife, fork and a spoon and a jar of strawberry jam. And his mother said, put a cup full of flour into the bowl, break an egg into the flour and stir, pour a cup full of milk over the flour and eggs and stir again until the batter is smooth and without clumps. Then she said to Jack, now pour a little full of batter into the hot pan. Jack's mother heated the frying pan over the fire and added a piece of butter. The butter melted fast. After a minute or two, she looked at the underside of a pancake. It was golden brown. Now what? she said. I will turn the pancake over. Ready? Ready, shouted Jack. Flip, said his mother. Up and over went the pancake high into the air and landed right in the pan. In another minute or two, the pancake was crisp on the on the side as well. Then she slipped the pancake from the frying pan onto the plate and spread some strawberry jam on it. And now Jack, his mother started to say, but Jack said, Oh, Mama, I know what to do now. The end.